this is the main module of our project. Let me explain the components of the switchboard to you. These are the manual switches. This and this are the power sockets for the outputs. And this is the step down transformer which is going to power the entire PCB. This transformer steps down the voltage from 240 volts to 12 volts. This is the main PCB which is the heart of a switchboard. And this is the XB Wi-Fi module which gives Wi-Fi capabilities to the switchboard and this is its antenna and these are the PIS sensors which will tell the switchboard whether the person is entering the room or exiting the room let us look at the symbolic diagram of this this is outside the room this is the open door and this is the region inside the room if a person enters the room the first PIR sensor detects his motion first and the second PIR sensor detects his motion second so we know that the person is moving inside the room if the second PIR sensor detects motion first and then the first PIR sensor detects the motion then the person is moving outside the room so what happens after the transformer has stepped down the voltage the step down AC voltage goes here this voltage goes to the bridge rectifier present here this voltage is stabilized by this bulk capacitor after that there are two LDOs 7805T and LM1117 which convert the voltage to 5 volt and 3.3 volt respectively this capacitor is present to stabilize the 3.3 volt as soon as I switch on the power the PCB on the switchboard gets powered. Now let us move on to the analog sensors part of the PCB. This IC is OPT101, a photodiode IC from TI. This IC is LM35, a temperature sensor IC from TI. We have also used another analog sensor that is the LPG gas sensor. This is not manufactured by TI and we have just designed the board for it after buying the components. So let us move on to the switches. These are the relays which are placed in staircase circuit with the manual switch. Also there is a circuit to turn on the relays and also there is a circuit to sense whether the output is high or low. Let me explain how the manual switches and the relays are placed. The manual switches and the relays are placed in a staircase circuit. Both the manual switch and the relay are SPDT switches. Now what happens is the live wire comes to the common terminal of the manual switch and the normally connected end of the manual switch is connected to the normally open end of the relay the normally open end of the manual switch is connected to the normally connected end of the relay so in the beginning there is no connection between live and out if either of these is switched on there is a connection and current flows at the output here if the current flows at the output a part of it goes to the sensing circuit which converts it to a voltage suitable to be sensed by the microcontroller. Now, why are we using a staircase circuit? In this circuit, either, of, either the manual switch or the relay can turn on or off the power controller. Let us see how the sensing circuit works. Part of the output current enters the circuit. This passes through a diode and a resistor divider and then to ground. Now, the ground of the board and the neutral are shorted. Because of this, a part of the output current is half wave rectified and gets divided by the voltage divider here. This capacitor is present to stabilize this voltage and a Zener diode is present in parallel so that the voltage does not go above 3.3. And here comes the sense output to the microcontroller. Now let us see how the microcontroller turns on and off the relay. One end of the relay coil is connected to 3.3 volts. The other end of the relay coil is connected through NPN transistor to the ground. The base of the transistor is connected to a GPIO from the micro. If the microcontroller gives a high output at the GPIO, the transistor shorts connect. If the microcontroller gives a high output on the GPIO, the collector and emitter of the NPN transistor are shorted. Because of this, there is a voltage difference across the relay coil. Due to this, the relay coil activates the switch. On the actual circuit board, this is the relay, this is the NPN transistor and this is the sensing circuit. Also, there is an LED to indicate whether the microcontroller has given a high output or not. Now let us move on to the brain of the device, the microcontroller. We are using MSP430 G2553 microcontroller for this purpose. We have designed the board such that the microcontroller can be plugged onto the board. On this board, we have also made the provision that the entire board can be plugged on as a shield onto the MSP430 launchpad as you can see now. 
This is done so that the debugging process is easy. Also, a person can develop on this device in a much easier fashion. Enough of introductions. So let us actually demonstrate the functionality of the switchboard. In our switchboard, unlike most common switchboards, each socket is designated a function. Each socket can be designated as a fan socket, a light socket or just a power socket. In our demonstration, the left socket is designated as a light socket. As you can see, the wire from the socket goes to a table lamp. Also, in this demonstration, we have designated the right socket as a fan socket. As you can see, the wire from the socket goes to a table. Before moving on to the actual functionality of the automated switchboard, let us see what data it collects about this environment. The MSP430 launchpad collects data from the sensors. After that, the data is communicated to a laptop computer using a USB cable. When a user presses S on the keyboard and presses enter, the statistics collected by the MSP430 launchpad appears on the screen. This display says that the temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, the acceleration is 25 units and the intensity of light incident on the switchboard is 1.53 microwatt. Also, this says that both the outputs are switched on. Information collected about the outputs is significant here because the outputs can either be switched on using the manual switches or by the microcontroller. So, this is how the microcontroller gets to know whether the output is on or off using the sensing circuit. When the user presses A on the keyboard and presses enter, the switchboard goes into auto mode, in which the true functionality of the switchboard comes into picture. Okay. Now let us demonstrate the autonomous nature of the left socket. As you can see, there are two identical lamps near the switchboard. This one is connected to the socket on the left, while this one is battery powered. Currently, the battery powered light is switched on. If the user switches off the battery powered light, the table lamp switches on on its own. And if the user switches on the battery powered line light, the table lamp switches off on its own. Now let me demonstrate the autonomous nature of the right socket. In this switchboard, the right socket has been designated as a fan socket. As you can see, the wire from the socket goes to a table fan. As you already know, this is the LM35 temperature sensor IC. The current temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. The program is written in such a way that if the temperature goes above 31 degrees Celsius, the fan turns on on its own. Now, now, to turn on the fan, I need to increase the temperature of the surroundings. I can do this by bringing a lighted cigarette lighter near the LM35. Now, as I bring a lighted cigarette lighter near the LM35 so that its surroundings heat up, let's wait for it to heat up. You can see that the fan has turned on on its own. Now that the fan is on, if the user wants to switch it off at his will, he just has to press, press the manual switch. As you can see, 
either the relay or the manual switch can be used to toggle the power. Now let us move on to the LPG sensor or you may even call it the sensor turns on an alarm and the ventilation when the smoke content in the air goes above a certain threshold. As I bring a lighted piece of paper near the smoke sensor, as you can see the red light on the LPG sensor has lit up and the fan has started running to douse the fire. This is the Wi-Fi module on the switchboard. It is XB-S6B. This makes the switchboard an Internet of Things object embedded with sensors and having the ability to log data on the internet. Now, both the switchboard and the laptop computer are connected to the Wi-Fi router. So both of them are on the same network. When the switchboard is actually installed in a room, the laptop will be replaced by a Python server running on an Amazon Cloud website. As soon as I run a python script on my computer, the python script creates a socket onto which the XB Wi-Fi is connected. As you can see from the text on the screen. After the connection is created, the user has to enter specific characters to perform specific functions. As soon as I press S on the keyboard and press enter, I get the current status of the switchboard. As you can see, a table lamp and a fan are connected to the sockets on the switchboard and there is no connection between the switchboard and the laptop. If I want to switch on the lamp remotely, I press 1 on the keyboard and press enter. As you can see, the lamp has switched on. If I want to switch on the fan, I press 2 corresponding to socket 2 to which the fan is connected and press enter. If I want to switch off a socket, I press the number of the socket on the keyboard and press enter. As you can see, the light has switched off now. If I press 2 on the keyboard and press enter, the fan also switches off. This way, a person can control the light and the fan or any other appliance in this room remotely using a computer, using a unique switchboard. If it monitors the data from the switchboard every hour, it can also be logged onto a file which can be stored on the server. This data can then be plotted as a line plot. This will help in analyzing the data and deriving conclusions. In the long run, this will help in, in deriving algorithms which can be used to reduce the consumption of energy. Thus, we have demonstrated a novel device that is capable of monitoring a building and controlling the appliances in it, thus improving the standard of living. Thank you. This completes our demonstration. We have built this module to demonstrate the switching and sensing circuit of our main board. Here we show 
how an android phone can be used to switch on and off light bulbs and know the current status of the outputs first we need to connect the mobile phone to the switchboard by pressing the connect button the android phone and the switchboard are paired now as you can see there are four switches which correspond to four light bulbs they are numbered as light 1 light 2 light 3 light 4 so let us press switch 1 As you can see, the bulb burn has lit up. Switch 2, switch 4, switch off switch 1, switch off switch 4, switch off switch 2, switch on switch 3. The manual switches and the switches on the tablet are in a staircase circuit. So either of these can be used to toggle the bulb's current state. Current state is reflected on the android. The only hardware used to make this device is a launch pad and a shield with the Bluetooth. Switch you can see the current status of the light bulbs is reflected on the android phone. This completes our demonstration. Thank you. This is the OS control switch module we have developed but have not included in the final product. Here we have developed a shield for the MSP430 launch pad which has three voice control LEDs and a Bluetooth module. We have developed an Android app for communicating with the device. These are the three LEDs on the launch pad. This is the Bluetooth module on the launch pad which will be used to pair with the Android phone. This is the app on the Android phone which we have developed. First, the Android phone has to pair with the Bluetooth module. After entering the passcode, I press OK. As you can see, a red LED has started glowing on the Bluetooth module say, to say that the Android phone has paired with it. As I press a button on the Android phone and speak, switch one on. You can see that the LED on the MSP430 launchpad has lit up. If I want to switch on another light, switch 3 on. If I want to switch off a light, switch 1 off. Thank you. This completes our demonstration.